Hey guys, welcome to our concrete pouring checklist video. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about just a couple of things we have on our concrete pouring checklist. Uh, we thought it'd be a nice to add like a little visual representation about what we're talking about on that checklist. So the first thing that we're going to start off with here is we're going to talk about the Y-axis rail supports. Now these are important because they have to be facing the right direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to come take a look here and just make sure that uh, these bars, these horizontal bars that run across here, that they're facing outside from the center of the machine. So what I mean by that is that this bar right here is facing away from here. And what it would look like if it were reversed around, this bar would be a lot closer to the center. So we want it facing outwards. And then we're going to come check the rear support. And we want the rear support bar facing outwards as well. This one's a little bit easier to tell because if it were facing towards the center of the machine, you wouldn't be able to attach these bolts that connect the cable support tube. So just kind of double check that visually. Uh, it is very important that those are facing the right direction. Uh, if not, you're going to have problems installing the Y-axis rails with accuracy. So if you if you catch it, if it's the wrong way around, it's better than just take the time now, kind of lift up the rails, turn it back around the right direction, set the rails down, and you'll end up thanking yourself for it later. Next thing, we're going to be doing a quick level test of our tip tray. So what we do is we're going to grab the longest level you can get. Uh, we have a 48-inch level, but uh, if you have a 12-inch level, that'll still work for what we're looking for. What you're going to do is just kind of set it, Lay it down across one way, make sure the bubble is with the lines. Just to make sure that nothing moved around while we were doing our the rest of our assembly. That way is good as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to check all four sides to make sure everything is still level. Uh, if not, it is worth it to go back through and use the leveling feet kit just to make sure that everything is still perfectly how it should be. Uh, if you don't have a leveling feet kit, you can also do shims. Uh, we recommend starting with eighth inch shims just to go a little bit at a time. That way we don't accidentally overshoot. Uh, while we're here. We're also going to take the level and do a quick test of the Y-axis rail assemblies. So I'm just going to lay it across here and make sure that everything is within the bubble. Uh, and this is just basically to see if the Y-axis rail assembly is correct. Uh, there's a chance that it might be off by a quarter inch, either on the rear or the front. And if that's the case, then we can shim underneath it and catch it now. Uh, that way our base plate will be level later on when we assemble it. All right, next up here is we're going to just double check that the support tube is uh, squarely placed underneath the machine. That's just going to make sure that there's enough strength underneath the chip tray to make sure it holds up the weight of the concrete. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come around to the front of the machine and we're just going to visually check that it is perfectly straight up and down. So I can visually see here that it is perfectly straight. Uh, I'm also going to double check that the tightness on the nut is preloaded by a full turn. That'll make sure it has enough tightness there to hold up everything without slipping or moving. Next, I'm going to come around the side here. I'm basically assuming the same thing for the side. I'm going to come down. Double check that it's perfectly straight on the side here. And that hasn't gone, it's still pre-tightened, and so we're all set. All right, moving right along, what we're going to do is we're going to do a visual check of our Y-axis rail stiffeners now. And what those are, those are our fun arrow pointed sheets of steel here. And all we're doing is we're doing a visual check of the slots that run across here and the threaded holes on the side of this Y-axis rail. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it up to the side of the rail here and visually see that I can see all of the threaded holes through the slots to make sure that everything's been machined correctly. I'm just gonna set that down and I'm gonna grab another one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and make sure that each one of those lines up with the side of the Y-axis rails to make sure that all of those are correct and all of our Y-axis rails are correct. That's gonna make sure that we don't run into he headaches later after we pour concrete and things are starting to cure. That's when we start to sweat. Uh, these are, remember, this is just going to be a visual check here. We're not going to be actually installing these. These are going to be installed into the concrete itself in a later step. All right, for this next step, this step is pretty involved, so we really want to take our time and get all our measurements correct before moving on to the next step in the assembly. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab our tape measure, and we're going to make sure that our Y-axis rail assembly here is exactly how we want it to be before pouring concrete. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to check the inside edge of the y-axis rail to the other inside edge of this y-axis rail and make sure that there is 34 inches going across the front and 34 inches going across the back. Uh, that's important to make sure our y-axis rails are parallel with each other. Next, we're gonna grab our outside corner dimensions. So we're looking for 49 and a half inches diagonally and then 49 and a half inches this way as well. So those are all set. Next, we're going to be moving on to the front of our Y-axis rail supports to the outside edge of our chip tray flange. 
that measurement is going to be eight and a quarter on this side and then eight and a quarter on that front side. So make sure both of those are exactly eight and a quarter within a sixteenth of an inch. Now moving on to the side, we're looking for three and a quarter on all sides evenly. For these dimensions, they don't have to be exactly three and a quarter. What matters most is that they are within a sixteenth of each other on all sides there. That's going to make sure that our entire assembly is square with the chip tray. Uh, so if you see anything that's not quite into dimension or right to spec, now is the time to fix it. Uh, we don't want to pour concrete and then find out that something's off. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to fix it. What we do for making sure if uh, everything is just a slight adjustment rather than making too big of an adjustment and taking hours to do this whole process, is we just take a mallet and we just lightly tap in order to bring our dimensions in. That's going to make sure that everything just goes a little bit at a time, just really nail in that sixteenth of an inch. All right, all of our tape measurements are good. So what we've done now is we've just taken our pre-assembled base plate and we've dropped it down into our Y-axis rails. All we're just checking for is we're making sure that all the positioners are going firmly down into the Y-axis rails themselves and that everything is making good contact. Uh, we don't want to find out later on down the road that these are too small or too short. And so we want to check those down before we start pouring out right. All right, last but not least, we're going to be going back through and we're going to be covering up any unused frame holes. So what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure we have these drains in here, so they're all set. And then after that, we're going to be checking to see if we have a legacy chip tray. Legacy chip trays will have two extra drain holes at the front and two in the back. We're going to want to cover those with a double layer of tape just to make sure that it's strong enough and to make sure that no concrete ends up falling out while we're doing our concrete pour. Otherwise, that'll make a mess of our shop. To a layer on top. Or layer the lot. Okay, and if we weren't using these two drains here on the sides, we'd also want to cover those with a double layer of tape. And after we've done the front two, if we have a legacy tray, we're also going to do the back two. So once everything is all taped, once everything's covered, we're going to do one more visual inspection just to make sure that we didn't leave any tools in our chip tray, so make sure nothing gets entombed in the concrete. That's the end of our checklist. Next thing, we're going to want to go over to our concrete pour video before we break down the concrete pouring a little bit more and show you how it's done. Thank you.